some questions. Um, I'm not very familiar with the mics, so if you can't hear me, just let me know. Um, so this afternoon, or I'm going to speak to you a little bit about lean leadership um, and the effect of that particular behaviour on success and engagement from the teams and then the outcomes of the actual project. Um, just to forewarn you, this isn't going to be some romantic notion of leadership, it's actually going to be a model of leadership that's attainable by people um, rather than us picturing pictures of Mount Everest and trying to reach some unattainable goals. So, just a quick overview. So, we're going to have six parts to the presentation, it's very brief, I promise. Um, so, why does Lean fail? Um, a little bit about myself, um, a little bit about the people involved in the process when you're doing Lean applications. A little bit about how we measure performance from people, um, and then a study that we carried out to check the impacts of leadership and on the people in the process, and then what all that means. So, firstly, why does Lean fail? Here's a list of 10 reasons why Lean fails or Lean implementations struggle. Um, and as you see, that 7 out of 10 are actually related to people. Um, and not that it's the people's fault, but it's the way that the, the, the things are structured. The way leadership leaders behave, but really it's all about the people and how it's their impact that ha hampers the success of lean projects. So, really, when it comes to success in lean, people matter, and moreover, leadership matters. So, I'm sure that that revelation has come as no surprise, and um, that the leadership role is critical to success. But really, the question we're going to look at here is to what extent. So. The second part, just a little bit about myself. I run an independent consultancy. I'm a business coach, a Lean and Six Sigma black belt, and a trainer. Um, I provide consultancy to businesses, mainly in the services or back office sector. Um, and I've been doing that for a, for, for a couple of years now. Prior to that, I spent 12 years in retail and operations management, four, three years training and consulting in Poland, and then as I said, four years training and consulting here. My background is in strategic management and psychology, and there's so two of the skill sets we combined for the particular study I'm going to tell you about here today. So, as part of our consulting process, we go through four stages. Discover, consult, train, and then coach. We spend a lot of time at the discovery phase, at this discovery phase here, as part of the pre-sales process, just going in initial meetings with clients to get a high-level overview of what the problem is. But the first stages of any kind of lean engagement is meant is really getting, empathizing with the problem and really getting a definition of what the underlying cause is. Once we've done that, we provide consultancy services. But the real difference with lean consultancy is that it's a transfer of skills in-house. That lean continuous improvement mindset becomes part of your organization. And that's where the training and the coaching fits in at the end. Now it's quite likely you go through several iterations of this in one company based on different functions or departments that you're working in. As part of our services, we fit into the Enterprise Ireland Grant System and they offer their clients Lean Start, Lean Plus and Lean Transform, which has a mixed amount of grants available, up to 50% funding available for lean projects. So, some of the challenges I face on a day-to-day -day basis. Applying Lean to services background is a challenge from, from the start. Um, the right application of tools and really the people in the process here as well. When you're working with people over machines, there's a how complexity the tasks and variation of tasks that people do. Uh, role definition, responsibility, task ownership, role ownership is a key issue as well. Communication across the board, organizational vision across the board. A lack of clarity about what it is that companies are trying to achieve is also an issue. But these three final ones are ones that we're going to address. How a team functions, how engaged the employees are, and the final one, the difference in leadership, the difference between us and them. So, I got my black belts out and I got thinking, how do you solve a problem like this? And then I decided to draw on the experience. So, combining psychology with lean, putting together a study to understand the impact of the people and leadership in the successful outcomes. So let's briefly look at the people in any kind of process. So in an organization you have your leader, you have the team, and you have the individual. And they all have a relationship with, with each other. How we measured them for the purposes of the study was we looked at leadership style, so transformational, 
process transactional. And there's another style called laissez-faire, which we have there. The team behavior, we use a metric called psychological safety, which is how safe people feel in teams. We'll talk a bit more about that next. And then the I behavior, the individual in the organization, how they behave, how engaged they are in their process, and another construct called discretion. Yeah. So just a bit more about those variables. Psychology variables is like the old, I'm not sure if you're familiar with this fable, where four men, four blind men are asked to describe an elephant, and they each come up with four completely different definitions based on the location of the elephant they were at. And psychology or any kind of variables in management and leadership have a similar problem. But we stuck to the academic measures and the academic variables is in terms of employee engagement. And it's a positive, fulfilling work related state of mind. The key thing is it can be measured through figure, dedication, and absorption. But the key outputs of engaged employees are retention. So while pay attracts people to organizations, while they're engaged, that will actually retain them. The second thing is in terms of productivity. And the final thing we're going to look at is discretionary effort, which we'll talk a bit more about in the next slide. Engagement is a hot topic at the moment because, and you'll see that by the likes of these global consultancies, all conducting big research and have their own measurements in terms of capturing it. So just that last part, discretionary effort. Discretionary effort is the difference between what people can do and what they do do. Okay? So it's what people can do and what they do do. And it's delivered freely with intrinsic motivation. So people will give you this free of charge. If you don't have to pay for it, you pay any extra, they do it because they want to do it. And Gallup believe that to be worth up to 20% in terms of productivity. Now set any kind of lean programs or improvement initiatives aside, if you can get an extra 20% in terms of productivity by simply engaging your workforce, that's a great place to start from. And these people who aren't engaged are actually working against you. The second thing was psychological safety. Psychological safety is a condition in which people and teams feel safe for risk taking. That's speaking up and speaking against what they believe to be a bad decision. It actually promotes people being comfortable making mistakes, learning from failure, and better innovation and design thinking, and, and everyone openly shares ideas. It moves organizations from a team position of group think, where everybody's afraid to object, to a position of team think, where people are, where dissent is almost promoted in a structured environment. So, in terms of your business, you know, what is it that engages people, and what is it that encourages people to say no? Is it, is it there in your business for you to think about? The last one is leadership style. So on any given day when I walk into an organization, I see this full range of leadership. Anything from Hitler to God himself. And in quite a lot of cases, it can be the same person, but the difference can be lunch. Um, but it does exist. So leadership theory is confusing. There's a lot of intangible descriptions, intangible um, theories about leadership. But the one we're going to look at today is the full range leadership model from BAS. Now, this particular type of leadership is a spectrum. It's not a category. So a person is in a position down here. People can move from this location up to this location with some training and with some, with some training. So the story is suddenly we carried out the three research questions. They were, what is the impact of the leader on the individual of the team? Do lean organizations differ than non-lean organizations? And does it impact the success of lean? So, these were our three variables which you'll remember from the previous slide. And what we found that transformational leadership, which is the good type of leadership, had a very positive effect on team behavior, psychological safety, and also on the employee engagement. So being a transformational leader had a positive effect there. Also, these two interrelated as well. So that more engaged people were, the better teams performed, the better teams performed, the more engaged. In terms of outputs then, these variables combined predicted the success of the lean program. So getting these things right actually told us whether the program was going to be successful. So it leaves us with the burning question, what does all this mean? Well, what it means is, if you want to increase engagement, if you want to increase discretionary effort, and you want to increase the likelihood of success on your continuous improvement or your lean initiatives, leaders really have to check their style and the culture that they create in order to succeed. There are three levels of engagement. People can be highly engaged, which is what we want to target, 
But we need to be really aware when people are disengaged. These aren't just unhappy people. They're working against any of the kind of initiatives that you're doing, and they're undermining the efforts that the organised sensation is making to succeed. In terms of psychological safety, leaders can shape that, and they can shape it by listening to their employees, finding common ground, challenging assumptions that are typically there, removing the status differences within teams, and promoting dissenting views. And as I said at the start, leadership, it's not some voodoo. The particular model of leadership that we use in this case, this spectrum of leadership, it can be trained. People can move from transactional leaders to transformational leaders, and they can move back down as well. There are times when tra transactional leadership is actually required, such as when tasks are very complex, or you have new employees, or in times of great urgency. So, I promised at the start there wasn't going to be pictures of mountains, but here's one mountain. But this isn't the overwhelming challenge. Most people, an improvement is just actually a little bit every day. It's not getting to the top of the mountain. And I think it's Muhammad Ali's quote that said, it's, it's not the mountain that's the challenge, but it's the pebble in your shoe. So I'm happy to take any questions if anyone has.